Yeah, so <clears throat> when we look at uh, big data, then we are really talking about uh, billions of lines. So if we can go to this year, this is a uh, really an example of uh, really how to uh, make the data available. Uh, so you can imagine uh, that companies, uh, they generate a lot of the data. They need to store the data somewhere. Then we can store it in a database. And we can talk about relational databases, non-relational da databases, and we can talk about the data warehouse. So really short, data has to live somewhere. So we provide a living for them on a database, but we are only uh, making sure that we just use one source. But of course, most companies tend to have more sources. So we need to have several databases. Do we store it with a relational or do we store it in a non-relational way? Rel relational way means that I'm going to store it, let's say as a table and that I also have um, keys associated with those uh, tables. Meaning that if I want to start digging in it, it's more easy. Non-relational da databases, I have a big pile of data, but it first needs to be structured. Database itself, we can't do much with it. It's more what it is really is, a pool of data. When we talk about a data warehouse, there we really take uh, the next step. Uh, there we have the basis uh, to start analyzing. So most what you will see, if they are already using a BI tool, that they will have a database, sorry, data warehouse, so a collection of the databases, uh, structured data, relational data. So when we look at this view, we start with our source data. It has been saved and we start to make a connection. Uh, first, we need to understand, is it a Hadoop uh, database, is it an or Oracle? Uh, how do we need to make a connection via o ODBC or direct uh, access? So we have the da data tier, that's what we have been discussing uh, quite, quite uh, some slides ago. So here we make the connection. We are using, and that's really a nice word for Scrabble, the data flux repository is where we really say, hey, we are going to retrieve some of the metadata. So you're only going to retrieve the data you need. You are not going to pull in every million of lines or billion uh, uh, of lines. You prepare jobs. So which step do you want to take? I need to transform my information. I need to join tables. I want to standardize it. That's why I'm using a quality knowledge data database. I want to make sure that it is according to, for example, XBRL in the Netherlands. So I'm going to use reference data packs. That is what I'm going to transform in my data management studio. So this is really high level uh, how data is stored and data is collected. When we go to the next sheet, then we really see a way of how we can connect uh, data. So what you now see is a print screen of a data management uh, software where we are going to connect uh, data. So we see a data source um, that we use as an input one. We have an input uh, two and we're going to make a few. So here you see an example, a really simple example of how we are going to retrieve data and how we are going to uh, join the da data. So taking the steps from really uh, a database, data warehouse, until a report or an export uh, to uh, tax software. There we see is more to really give you uh, a little bit more insight on what those steps uh, are. So we really need to make sure that we connect to the right database, that we have the right settings. So uh, garbage in is garbage out. A lot of time uh, is used for setting up these connections. On one hand, we have tools that help us to do it in an efficient way, so we can do it with visuals, or we start programming uh, to make that connection. When we go to the last slide, that's the most fun part where we are really looking at, hey, I'm going to use code to connect to uh, via ODBC to an SQL server. But we also ask, hey, we go, we are just going to take a little part of it and we're going to export it as a table. And that is what we are uh, talking about. So we have, for example, SAP HANA, but we have other software tools. All software tools have a database. 
and we are going to retrieve data, specific data from that database. We are going to put it in a table and we are going to join the tables. And those are the steps we take to get to an acceptable data set for tax software. I think the essential of data architecture is that uh, we need to raise the relevant questions where the data comes from. Uh, we need to be able to uh, follow the A to G logic. Um, are we in PPMs I'm always able to do the last four slides? I think no. That's that's a, a given. That's not uh, that there will be a few guys like Jeff and Robert and 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 Stephen who are more into the the coding and the the data source and, and seeing the the detailed level of uh, how do you collect data and how do you subsequently store data before you start extracting. I think uh, we we need to involve guys like Robert to uh, to have that. Uh, insight in um, and beyond just the, the, the generic questions on A to G, which every one of us can ask. But if we get very detailed answers on, on configurations like the one we we shown on the last four slides, it's time to uh, call in the troops who really know and uh, like Robert who are doing this on a daily basis, so they can uh, not only uh, validate the answers to our initial high-level questions, but they can also um, uh, do a check on the data sets the clients are actually sharing with us. And I think at that point in time, you obviously start uh, double-checking quality and integrity of data sets from clients uh, beyond just what the client hands to you, but you're also, as, as Robert indicated here, with the word big data, but also what uh, Stephen Curtis used in terms of forensic uh, accounting as a reference, they also will use other sources to validate that data pool. Uh, is it not loaded with outliers and corrupted data, which the client doesn't even know about? So there's not, not always an intent by the client to give you poor data, poor quality data or not data which is tested on integrity, et cetera, because there's in a lot of multinationals, there's not always the, the, the level of detail and sophistication and tools and, and time, you know, simply time to actually do these, uh, do these extra tests to see, okay, this is clean enough for tax purposes and therefore we can start building the calculations of our tax um, liability on that.